talked a lot about it this year. With infrastructure and stimulus, are high-speed trains really going to be the future of travel in parts of America? Now a lot more attention being placed on the rails in the wake of that security scare flying into Detroit. Our next guest is a big believer in high-speed rail, and he is the inventor of a train that he thinks might be able to revolutionize train travel. Joining us now is Jim Powell. He's inventor of the Maglev 2000. It is a train that goes really fast and doesn't touch no. the track. No, it clears the track about that much. Okay, now this is not sci-fi. These no. types of trains are in use around the world right now. Yes, uh, we, Gordon Danby and I invented them in 1966. And uh, right after we published our papers, we had people come from Japan and Germany and all over the world, and they started their development programs, and which are now operating in a number of countries. Okay, now, n n no offense to you at all, Jim, but I mean, it's 43 years later. Why are we suddenly talking about <laughs> why magnetically levitated trains might be a good idea? Well, where, where have we been? Why is America so far behind the rail curve? Well, uh, the uh, Senator Moynihan tried to get a uh, program started, and we helped him write the legislation. It passed the Senate for uh, 1990 for a $750 million program. If it had passed the House, we now would have a network of these maglev trains all over America. We'd be able to hop on a train in New York, right? head to D.C. in what, 90 minutes? Uh, it would be uh, less than that. Probably. Less than that? Yeah, probably about 45 minutes. That's it? That's it. Instead, we either got to take the three-hour Acela, which is constantly delayed, right? or wait in lines at the airport to get patted down. Right. And the, uh, the, the Japanese have essentially built our design back uh, that we proposed back in 1966, and it's been very successful, and they're going to build a Tokyo to Osaka line. 300 miles, goes, takes one hour for the trip carry 100,000 passengers a day. What's the, what's the, okay, so what's, if you can go 360 miles an hour, what do you, what's the, what's the realistic average speed of these things? Uh, between cities, 300. 300, 300 miles an hour. An hour. That, that's a typical average speed. Yeah. Right. Safely. No, yes. no record of safety problems. No. Don't, no. don't read Japanese, a lot about major rail accidents. Japanese have uh, carried uh, close to 100,000 passengers in their demonstration line. They've gone hundreds of thousands of miles on a demonstration line. So what's the problem? I mean, we do have rail transportation in the United States. It's slow. Yes. Well, the problem is that why did Senator Moynihan's legislation not go all the way? It was killed in the House by the representative from Detroit. That, Shocker. That's not unusual. No, it's, I mean, we are a car-based nation. And here's the problem. People will write in and they'll say, I live in North Dakota. I don't want to pay any tax dollars. For a high-speed rail, I'll never benefit. How do you counter that argument? Well, uh, what we're saying is that we have developed a new generation of maglev beyond what Japan has already built in, uh, and what is operating in China. And the new generation carries highway trucks as well as... Uh, it's not just people. people. It has vehicles that carry highway trucks. So you're going to sell this as, as more green. And it also carries personal autos. Now, highway trucks is a big, big market intercity highway trucks in the United States. People spend more than $300 billion a year on intercity trucks. They only spend $60 billion a year on air travel, first passenger travel. The payback time for the system that we're developing is about five years. Oh. So it can be privately financed. It doesn't have to have government subsidies. We like to hear that these days. Yes. Jim, that's, that's a refresh. Here's the other piece of advice I have for you, because as the viewers know, I'm a big proponent of high-speed rail, having traveled around and seen how great it is. Paint your trains green. Make commercials showing flowers and children's running through fields. Just, you know, talk about the environmental aspects. It'll get through. I, I, I think your advice is very good. Unfortunately, yeah. we are tend to be too technically oriented. And not, you went to not, MIT? Not, you, you need somebody dumb like me to try to help market it. Jim Powell, thank, thank you very you. much. Good luck. Good. Appreciate it.